Castaway is about a man whose time on an island in the Pacific changes his perception and views on life and relations. Unlimited willpower, yet helplessness against fate, and how to befriend a volleyball in ultimate isolation is the beauty of this timeless masterpiece. After the success of Forrest Gump 1994, director Robert Zemeckis yet again teams up with Tom Hanks and gives him the role of a lifetime as an enthusiastic, workaholic FedEx employee. CDG, FE, ME, Memphis on the airport truck, everything else right there. Nikolai, tick tock, tick tock, four minutes. Hanks can bring life into any character and played the role of Chuck Nolan with absolute authority. Just imagine, he lost almost 50 pounds and raised a long beard just to reflect how a man would look in four long years. Now that's dedication. Zemeckis starts off with a brief introduction to all the characters of the film. Chuck is committed to his work to an extent that he is willing to go from one part of the world to another, only to see that every package is delivered on time. 87 hours is a shameful outrage. This is just an egg timer. The opening scenes also show glimpses of the relationship between Kelly Ferrers, played by Helen Hunt, and Chuck and how the beep on Chuck's pager has been delaying both lovers to tie the knot. Just so long as you're here New Year's Eve. I will be here New Year's Eve, I promise. Chuck promises Kelly to meet up with her on Christmas before departing for Malaysia on a FedEx cargo plane. Chuck is presented with a family heirloom by Kelly. Mark my words, he's gonna love it. I'll be right back. In the next sequence, we see Chuck and some of his team members in a fearsome plane crash. The terror and fear showcased by Chuck during this event is not for the faint-hearted, and the execution is top-notch. The story unfolds as Chuck wakes up and finds himself on an airboard, drifting ashore. You see Chuck's desperation for help in the melancholic feel in which Chuck shouts out to the island in hopes of hearing someone, anyone, say something back. Anybody? Now that Chuck fully realizes that he may as well be doomed, the first thing he does oh. is writes down help on the shoreline. Oh. Soon, Chuck's help has been washed away by the tides and he quickly adapts. With long wooden sticks, he lays the foundation of his hope and writes help again, expecting any passing by planes to see and rescue him. The basic instincts kick in too, and he needs to find food and water to survive. In a very exciting scene, Chuck occasionally hears sounds of something dropping and eventually realizes that it's coconuts falling from the trees. He desperately needs to find a way to open the coconuts and eventually succeeds in doing so. Something to drink at last! Miraculously, the package boxes that seem to have come ashore with the tides bring help to Chuck. Chuck gathers up the courage to start exploring his temporary abode, or as he would think. During these escapades, coral reefs damage his feet when he attempts to find fish in the water, and he smartly shortens his pants and wraps the cloth around his feet to manage. Chuck sees a rock mountain and intends to survey his location from atop. Weak and tired, he struggles to reach the top and finally makes it only to see that there's something or someone floating in the water below. Chuck rushes down only to see that it's the dead body of the pilot of their plane. And also shows the human instinct for survival as Chuck takes the pilot's shoes and keeps a torch that was on him 
before burying him down. William Royals Jr., the screenwriter for Castaway, portrays a heart-touching burial of the deceased pilot by Chuck, and it goes to show the value of human life and humanity even in the worst of time and places. It's been a few weeks now and Chuck cannot survive on coconuts alone. He is reluctant to open the boxes to see if he can find anything worth his use. Not much goes in his favor either when he finally starts opening them up as only a few items seem usable. These include a pair of ice skates, VHS tapes, paper, a dress and a volleyball. Chuck decides not to open the last box with little angel wings on it. The wings on the package gave hope to Chuck, which as he states near the end of the movie, when he finally delivers the package and leaves a note. This package saved my life. <laughs> Spending his days on the island now, Chuck holds on to the volleyball who he named Wilson and eventually grows fond of him. time too. Couldn't take much more of those coconuts. Coconut milk's a natural laxative. The solace he finds in speaking to Wilson, not as a volleyball but a friend, is so remarkably close to the human connections we all feel and live for. There are many scenes to cherish amongst the two. Sharing his feelings of missing Kelly with the picture in front confiding in Wilson when he takes out his teeth. Or the most emotional one, my personal favorite, when he loses Wilson to the high tides and rough weather on trying to leave the island after four years. It makes people watching the movie say out loud, Wilson! I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson, I'm sorry! There are a lot of things one can and should take away from this amazing feed. Although silent in nature, there are scenes near the end of the movie that are as dramatically sound as they are thought-provoking. Many people do not heed the importance of these certain scenes, such as when Chuck lays down next to his bed at home and goes into deep thought while turning the light lamp on and off. Or the scene where Chuck takes a long look at the food on his table after the party at his home. Some might take away the unpredictability of life, the abundance of the little things we take for granted, or what Chuck feels while holding that piece of food in his hand. Certainly, he is thinking of the hardships he has faced in creating that fire. He should be proud. <laughs> we sincerely hope that you take away a chunk of goodness from all this. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next video.